Are you suffering with peripheral neuropathy? In this video, I'll tell you the five foods that alleviate nerve pain and the five foods you should start avoiding right now. Keep watching. If you eat the wrong foods, it can really make your peripheral neuropathy worse. This means your symptoms like pain, numbness, burning, could all get stronger and your condition might even progress faster. Choosing the right foods and avoiding the wrong ones can help manage your symptoms better and prevent your condition from getting worse. This is why it's really important for you to watch what you eat if you're dealing with peripheral neuropathy. It's not about following a fad diet either. I'm going to give you simple ways to modify your eating habits that can dramatically improve your peripheral neuropathy. If you've struggled with eating and diets, I understand, I've been there too. And if I can overcome it, so can you. I'll share with you how I did this and how I've been able to do the same for many of my patients. I will also show you how eating healthy doesn't have to be expensive, boring, or difficult, and how small changes over time can lead to significant health improvements. And be sure to watch right to the end of this video because I will give you three additional superfoods that should be the cornerstone of your diet. You do not want to miss that. Hi, I'm Dr. Ole Olson, America's neuropathy coach. For almost 20 years, I've been helping patients with peripheral neuropathy. I've assisted thousands of patients and taught hundreds of doctors nationwide on how to manage this condition gently and effectively without the use of drugs or surgery. I founded Asuda Health, which has expanded to five clinics across the Midwest, specifically focused on serving and treating individuals with peripheral neuropathy. I chose the name Asuda for its meaning, to be healed, reflecting our deep commitment to healing those afflicted by this debilitating condition. Recognizing the difficulties in managing constant pain, the scarcity of widespread knowledge among healthcare providers, and the ongoing quest for effective treatments, this channel aims to bridge the gap. Our mission is clear, to offer hope and relief to everyone suffering from peripheral neuropathy. Now go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you're looking for breakthrough methods that can significantly reduce your neuropathy pain and improve your daily life. Let's embark on this journey to wellness together. Before we talk about the five foods to eat and the five foods to avoid for peripheral neuropathy, let's first look at a simple shopping tip. Stick to the outer edges of the grocery store for most of your shopping. And why should we stick to the outer edge? Because that's where we find the whole foods. Things like the meats, vegetables, fruits. This should be the bulk of what you consume on a daily basis. Now, the aisles are always good to add in for some of those whole grains, healthy cooking oils, and even some of our seasonings that we love to use. But we want to stick the majority of our shopping to the outer edge. A question I often get is, healthy eating is expensive, or it's boring, or it's just plain hard to do. So how have I and many others overcome these challenges? First, find a handful of recipes that you love to eat and consume them on a regular basis. If you can get a routine going where you eat the same foods throughout the week, it makes it much easier for continuing to eat healthier things. Next, what you want to do is use our good friend Google. What you're going to do is go into Google and search for healthy alternatives to things that you enjoy. So you could put in you know, pizza or enchiladas or whatever it is and just type in a healthy alternative for chicken enchiladas and let Google do some work for you and find some ways to make those things healthier if you're not comfortable doing that on your own. Another thing you can do is to shop in multiple grocery stores. This is for the expensive part. What I've found is pricing can vary drastically from store to store. So we use about between three and five different grocery stores for our weekly needs. Finding different deals from different stores and uh, picking the best option at each one to make it budget friendly. When patients ask me how to get started on their journey towards better health, I always give them these three things to focus on. First thing you wanna do is start with just one to two things. You're not gonna go home and change everything. I don't want you to go clear out your fridge and empty all of your cupboards and start from scratch tomorrow. That's just not feasible for most people. So what you wanna do is just pick one to two things that can have the biggest impact on your health. Next, what you're gonna do is find some easy swaps that can drastically improve your health. So for example, you can swap out coconut oil instead of the vegetable oil you've been using. This one swap can make a huge impact on your health and it's not huge. It's not a huge overtaking to, to do it. Once you create your new habit, which is typically somewhere in the ballpark of four to six weeks, what you're gonna do is make another small change. And every four to six weeks after you create these new habits, you just make one to two more changes. And over time, you're gonna build more and more healthy habits that'll be long-term changes to your diet and to your lifestyle versus trying to drastically overhaul everything at once and then giving up a couple weeks in. Think of January 1st when everybody goes to the gym. Now, one thing many people get stuck on is they get sucked into these the latest fad diet. These can be things like paleo, carnivore, a vegetarian, a keto diet, etc. While these could have positive changes in the short term, we really want to look at how we approach food overall. A couple of simple ways to approach food differently is to look at food as fuel. Our food is, is an energy source for us to function as humans. Instead of looking to it as, as our sole enjoyment in life, I look at it as a way to fuel your body to be able to be more active with your spouse, to be more active with your kids or your grandkids, or to do your job more efficiently. So looking at food as fuel is a huge one. Next, don't be afraid to try new things and new ways to prepare them. I found that there's foods that I didn't like in the past that I've tried new ways, baking it, grilling, steaming, 
or raw. Try different methods of preparing foods that maybe you didn't like in the past and see if your taste buds have changed over time. Next, I'd like to discuss a few things that you should be avoiding. Here are five foods that you must absolutely avoid when dealing with peripheral neuropathy. First is vegetable and seed oils. Vegetable and seed oils become rancid very rapidly. They're also very high in omega-6 fatty acids, which means they're very inflammatory and inflammation is one of the key drivers in peripheral neuropathy. Next is added sugars. We wanna limit adding sugars to anything. We wanna get our sugars mainly from whole foods, such as fruits. Uh, adding sugars, once again, increases inflammation in the body, which can lead to more peripheral neuropathy issues. Grains are another big one. Uh, if we can avoid grains, especially those white grains, so white flour, white rice, things like that, because grains are also very high in omega-6 fatty acids, which means they are inflammatory in nature and can cause more problems with peripheral neuropathy. We also wanna avoid anything that's hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated. So if we start to look at things uh, in packaged and pre-processed foods, you wanna look for anything that says hydrogenated oil or hi partially hydrogenated oil, as these are hidden labels for trans fats and trans fats are really bad on our blood flow and circulation. This is one of the other big things we see with peripheral neuropathy. And then lastly is, is deep fried foods. Any fried foods, potato chips, french fries, uh, things like that are all filled with those bad oils that go rancid. Um, there are also a lot of hydrogenated oils used in those. So these can create inflammation, clog up the arteries, all sorts of bad stuff when it comes to peripheral neuropathy. Now I know none of us like taking things away. So now I wanna give you five foods that you must add back to your diet if you're dealing with peripheral neuropathy. The first is organic olive and coconut oil. These oils are two great additions to your diet as they're very powerful anti-inflammatories, as well as they replace those nasty oils that you're probably using from your cupboard right now. You wanna look for raw and organic oils when, when picking these oils and use the olive oil more for or use it on salad dressings, things like that, and then coconut oil more for your high temperature cooking. You also wanna add in fatty fish, such as salmon, tuna, and sardines. These are powerful anti-inflammatories as well, which help improve blood flow and circulation. You wanna look for wild caught though. Don't buy the farm stuff. That's filled with those omega-6 fatty acids we're trying to avoid. I also like to use a fish oil supplement just because I'm not a, a big fish person myself, so I don't consume enough fish to get all the benefits that I would need. So I use an omega-3 fish oil supplement, and these are highly tested to get rid of all all those toxins, the mercury, the lead, PCBs, and all the other contaminants that we don't want in our fish. So uh, those are a good thing to use as a supplement as well. The third thing you wanna add into your diet is berries. Now berries are one of the lowest glycemic index fruits that you can consume, and they're loaded with antioxidants. Lots of anti-inflammatory properties, so these are something you wanna consume every single day. Dark leafy greens are the next one. Dark leafy greens have tons of nutrients. Uh, there's a book, Greens for Life. It's a great book. Talks about how a lot of times the greens that we're tossing in the trash actually have 10 times the nutrients as the root vegetables that we consume. So make sure you keep all those greens, get lots of different mixtures. So, you know, kale and spinach, you know, uh, chard. So try to get a combination of greens and, and vary through those. Uh, but once again, there's tons of nutrients in them. They also want to help improve blood flow and circulation. Uh, the last one is beets. This is a food that a lot of people have heard about or a supplement they've used, uh, but beets are, are very powerful anti-inflammatories, but they really boost our circulation as they help drive nitric oxide in the body. As promised, here's your bonus tip. Three superfoods that you must be eating. The first one is cruciferous veggies. These are things like broccoli and cauliflower. These lower the risk of stroke and heart attacks helping with our blood flow and helping reduce inflammation in the body. The next one are chia seeds and flax seeds. Uh, these are both powerful anti-inflammatories. You can use them in smoothies, you can put them in yogurt, uh, things like that. But once again, these are gonna help reduce inflammation, ultimately helping your overall health as well as your peripheral neuropathy. And the last superfood that I wanna stress is avocado. This superfood is loaded with magnesium. Magnesium deficiency is actually linked with a higher risk of type two diabetes. So. If you have type 2 diabetes, it could be potentially caused by a deficiency in magnesium. So add those avocados in on a daily basis. I hope you found this video helpful and learned new ways to adjust your diet for faster healing from peripheral neuropathy. Now it's your turn. What have you been struggling with as far as your peripheral neuropathy? What are your biggest challenges with eating and diet? Comment below and let me know. If you learned something new today about improving your peripheral neuropathy with simple dietary changes, please like and share this video. Spreading the word helps others benefit from these insights too. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more breakthrough methods that can significantly improve your overall health. It can also help reduce your neuropathy pain and improve your quality of life. The next video you should watch is this one right here. If you wanna get my three-step home care protocol for peripheral neuropathy pain relief, go ahead and watch this video next.